the ocean has been getting bluer, according to a study published in the journal Nature. But that's not really good news for the planet. It means that the plants that give the ocean its green tint aren't doing well. Scientists say that because the ocean has been getting warmer. A majority of U.S. high school students say they get bored in class every day, and more than one out of five has considered dropping out, according to a survey released on Wednesday. The survey of 81,000 students in 26 states found two-thirds of high school students complain of boredom, usually because the subject matter was irrelevant or their teachers didn't seem to care about them. Well, in 2004, we integrated ticketing in South East Queensland, so we introduced a paper uh, ticket that allowed you to travel across all the three modes in South East Queensland, so bus, train and ferry. And the second stage of uh, integrated ticketing is the introduction of a smart card. And the smart card will enable people to store value, uh, so to, to put uh, value on the card and then to use the card for travelling around the system. We miscommunicate more commonly than we communicate accurately. Often the words we have are at least somewhat inadequate to express how we feel. The first words we think of are often poor reflections of what we really mean. We might at times even want to take our words back for a second attempt. But once those words have left our mouths, our partners are already replying to whatever we have just said. Most conversations happen too fast to allow us to figure out what we really meant to say. For the first time, Japanese researchers have conducted a real-life experiment that shows how some traffic jams appear for no apparent reason. They placed the 22 vehicles on a single track and asked the drivers to cruise around at a constant speed of 30 kilometres an hour. At first, traffic moved smoothly, but soon the distance between cars started to vary and vehicles clumped together at one point on the track, but the jam spread backward around the track, like a shockwave, at a rate of about 20 kilometres an hour. Real-life jams move backward at about the same speed. He, about the same time, was so much displeased with the performances of a nobleman's French cook that he exclaimed with vehemence, I'd throw such a rascal into the river, and he then proceeded to alarm a lady at whose house he was to sup, by the following manifesto of his skill. I, madam, who live at a variety of good tables, am a much better judge of cookery than any person who has a very tolerable cook, but lives much at home, 
for his palate is gradually adapted to the taste of his cook, whereas, madam, in trying by a wider range, I can more exquisitely judge. When invited to dine, even with an intimate friend, he was not pleased if something better than a plain dinner was not prepared for him. I have heard him say on such an occasion, This was a good dinner enough to be sure, but it was not a dinner to ask a man to. On the other hand, he was wont to express, with great glee, his satisfaction when he had been entertained quite to his mind. When at table, he was totally absorbed in the business of the moment. His looks seemed riveted to his plate, nor would he, unless when in very high company, say one word, or even pay the least attention to what was said by others, till he had satisfied his appetite, which was so fierce, and indulged with such intenseness, that while in the act of eating the veins of his forehead swelled, and generally a strong perspiration was visible. To those whose sensations were delicate, this could not but be disgusting, and it was doubtless not very suitable to the character of a philosopher who should be distinguished by self-command. But it must be owned that Johnson, though he could be rigidly abstemious, was not a temperate man either in eating or drinking. He could refrain, but he could not use moderately. He told me that he had fasted two days without inconvenience, and that he had never been hungry. This being acquired and established, silence would be more easy, and my desire being to gain knowledge at the same time that I improved in virtue, and considering that in conversation it was obtained rather by the use of the ears than of the tongue, and therefore wishing to break a habit I was getting into of prattling, punning, and joking, which only made me acceptable to trifling company, I gave silence the second place. This and the next, order, I expected would allow me more time for attending to my project and my studies. Resolution, once became habitual, would keep me firm in my endeavors to obtain all the subsequent virtues. Frugality and industry freeing me from my remaining debt and producing affluence and independence would make more easy the practice of sincerity and justice, etc., etc. Conceiving then that, agreeably to the advice of Pythagoras in his Golden Verses, Daily examination would be necessary. There is such a thing as information overload. There is just so much information out there now that we can't cope with it or fully absorb it or even decide which bits of it we want to keep in our minds or which to discard. There is a similar thing going on with the range of choices we have as consumers. There is so much stuff out there, so much to choose from that... According to some experts, this situation is making us miserable. Most of us believe that the more we have to choose from, the better. Yet, apparently, our dissatisfaction with this wealth of choice, or rather the anxiety it produces, is part of a larger trend. It seems that as society grows more affluent and people become freer to do what they want, the unhappier they become.
It is difficult to know how to place Montesquieu if you're the kind of person who likes to categorize historian, political philosopher, sociologist, jurist, or if you think the Persian letters a novel, a novelist. He was all these things. Perhaps, as some have, he could be placed among that almost extinct species, the man of letters. The books that make up the spirit of the laws have had the most influence on later thinkers, and in them, as in his equally great considerations on the causes of the grandeur and decadence of the Romans, he makes his underlying purpose clear. It is to make the random, apparently meaningless variety of events understandable. He wanted to find out what the historical truth was. His starting point, then, was this almost endless variety of morals, customs, ideas, laws and institutions, and to make some sense out of them. He believed it was not chance that ruled the world, and that beyond the chaos of accidents, there must be underlying causes that account for the apparent madness of things. There have been many studies in America of the opinions and behavior of university lecturers and professors, and of well-known free or public thinkers who are not attached to a university or other institution, which show that those who are recognized as being more successful or productive as scholars in their field, or are at the best universities, are much more likely to have critical opinions. That is to say that they are more likely to hold liberal views, in the American use of that word, than those of their colleagues who are less creative or who have less of a reputation. The better a university is, as measured by the test results of its students or by the prestige of its staff, the more likely it has been that there will be student unrest and a relatively left-of-center faculty. The spinal cord, the link between the brain and the body, is a band of nervous tissue about the thickness of your little finger that runs through the backbone. Nerve cells called motor neurons convey electric impulses that travel from the brain to the spinal cord, branching off at the appropriate point and passing to the various parts of the body. Similarly, Sensory neurons transmit messages from organs and tissues via the spinal cord to the brain. But the spinal cord also functions without the brain having to intervene. It alone controls those actions called spinal reflexes that need to be carried out very fast in response to danger. Before farming was introduced into Scotland, people lived by hunting, fishing, and gathering wild foodstuffs. This way of life meant that they usually didn't settle permanently in one place, but were to an extent nomadic, moving about in search of a livelihood, perhaps returning to the same places at certain times of the year. It is believed that the islands of Orkney were known to these people, but so far... Only a few flint tools have been found to verify this. This is because coastal erosion has destroyed many ancient sites, and these may have contained relics of some of these earliest pioneering colonists.
To be honest, the biggest problem for most undergraduate students in terms of academic writing is not only adapting to a far more structured and formal style, but also learning how to ascertain the difference between important, valid information and unnecessary or even irrelevant material. In my experience, I would say it takes students their first year, if not longer, to appreciate what is required and to start to implement those requirements in their writing. What they really should be doing, if they are struggling with written assignments, is to seek help from the excellent support services which are available at the university. Learning a language in the classroom is never easy, and quite frankly, it's not the way that most people would choose to learn if they had other options. Having said that, there are plenty of reasons for keeping languages on the school curriculum. For one thing, a fair number of students go on to take jobs in business and commerce that require a basic knowledge of a second language. When you talk to young employees in top companies, it seems that they had a career plan from the start. They were motivated to find additional things to put on their CVs, and of course, language is one of those added but significant extras. So a virus is something that you can't see by normal light microscopy. You need very advanced techniques of electron microscopy to see it. But that virus is not able to reproduce itself without a host. And us as human beings are made up of lots of different cell types. And we are interested in understanding at the molecular level how that virus infects the liver. And why does this infect the liver and it doesn't infect the heart or it doesn't infect other tissues? For many years, the favorite horror story about abrupt climate change was that a shift in ocean currents could radically cool Europe's climate. These currents, called the overturning circulation, bring warm water and warm temperatures north from the equator to Europe. Susan Luzier, an oceanographer at Duke University, says scientists have long worried that this ocean circulation could be disrupted. In animals, a movement is coordinated by a cluster of neurons in a spinal cord called the contract patterns generator, CPG. This process pr produces signals that drive muscles to contract rhythmically in ways that produce running or walking, depending on the pattern of pulses. A simple signal from the brain instructs the CPG to switch between modes such as going from standstill to walking. Now that story has been scotched as a part of a contingency planning, but it was a symptom of the dramatic turn of events in South Australia, and it flushed out other remarks from water academics and people like Tim Flannery, indicating that things were really much worse than had been foreshadowed even earlier this year. So is Adelaide, let alone some whole regions of South Australia, in serious bother? 
considering that the vast amount of its drinking water comes from the beleaguered miri something many of us outside the state may not have quite realized is there a predicament something we have to face up to as a nation